Hi everyone, I'm Tomohiro Fujita from Waseda Institute for Advanced Study. Today I'd like to talk about cosmic bioreflingence. Okay, let me start. So title of my talk is Cosmic Bioreflingence, bio How Our Universe Bioleaves to Left Light Symmetry. So I'm, again, I'm Tomohiro Fujita from Waseda Institute of Advanced Study. And this talk is based on these papers and these collaborators. So it's, this talk is all about left light symmetry. So in physics, it's called parity symmetry or reflectional symmetry, mirror symmetry. And symmetry is crucially important in modern physics. So in classical dynamics or electromagnetism gravity, this respect to uh, parity symmetry. But here I took a, a face of a famous football player and perform Miller symmetry transformation for uh, left hand side of his face and right hand side of his face. You may have thought his face is pretty symmetric, but it turns out it's pretty actually asymmetric. Like this. So in reality, so polity symmetry is often broken. So here's another uh, daily life example. So some of us are lefty, um, but the majority of us are right-handed. So which causes this kind of issue sometimes. So this is an example of a uh, body violation. Well, all living animals on ours uses uh, this DNA, but uh, this spiral shape of DNA could be the opposite, other way around uh, spiral shape, but all the DNA on ours are one side of this, this type of uh, spiral shape. There's no other way around uh, shape of DNA for living a uh, life on ours. And in chemistry, so chiral molecular uh, exists, this kind of thing. So these two types of uh, uh, molecules connected with body uh, transformation. So they use the same ingredients, but sometimes they show the different nature uh, in chemistry. And in the most fundamental level, so in the particle physics uh, standard model, so uh, weak interaction known to violate the polity symmetry. So, uh, only left-handed particles uh, has a weak interaction. So these are all known examples of party violation. But today I'd like to ask uh, this question. So is this party symmetry preserved on the largest scale? So namely our universe. So, so to consider that, let me introduce a phenomenon called the bioreflingence. So there exists bioreflingence materials such as crystal, so in which uh, photon rotates linear polarization plane, okay? So let's consider a linear polarized photon. So when it propagates vacuum, so nothing happened. So it's just a linear, it's a linear polarization plane doesn't change. So electric wave, for example, just oscillate on the same polarization plane. However, once this photon goes into bioreflingent material, so the, this polarization plane gradually rotates as it propagates inside uh, bioreflingent material. And as a result, so its final uh, polarization plane can be quite different from polarization, initial polarization plane. So th this, this phenomenon is called bio bioreflingence. And please note that this rotation can be clockwise and or counterclockwise. So it's a polity violating phenomenon so in this case, it is a material structure that determines either of them happen. So clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. So in other words, polity symmetry is violated by the structure of the material. Okay, that's understandable. But a couple of years ago, some people found the signature showing this cosmic bioflingence, so, sorry, bioflingence happen even in the vacuum region of our universe. So they found bioreflingence uh, in the big one light, surprisingly. So let's take a brief look at the history of the universe. So our universe somehow began 30.8 billion years ago, and many things happened in the course of its evolution. So uh, in the very early stage, our universe was very hot and dense, so so that uh, photon cannot propagate for the long distance because it's got it's uh, barely reflected to get uh, scattered by uh, many many charged particles. But as at some point, the so universe uh, gets cooled down sufficiently, and the uh, the scattering between photon and the charged particle uh, less frequently happen, 
then so we can observe the photon coming from that time called uh, recombination. And such a photon is called CMB, cosmic microwave background light. So basically we uh, we can observe such a photon. The photons propagating from the hot big bang are being observed today. For example, by this uh, Planck satellite uh, launched by uh, European Space Agency. So Planck gave us this kind of uh, detailed polarization map of the big bang light, CMB photon. So these uh, color scheme represent the uh, uh, temperature anisotropy, so uh, dense region or hotter region of the universe or colder region. But here I want to forecast on these uh, black solid lines, small lines. So these lines uh, represent the linear polarization uh, angle of these CMB photons. So we have a very detailed data of uh, polarization map, uh, polarization pattern of CMB photons. And analyzing this data uh, in 2020, Minami and Komatsu found uh, bar refringence or optical rotation about 0.3 degree for all of these photons. So it's interesting to consider what can cause such a uh, cosmic violet engines. Okay, that's where's the introduction. Okay, let's take a closer look at the cosmic violet engines. So we have a, a standard cosmology paradigm called lambda CDM. So here lambda represents a, a cosmological constant or dark energy, and the CDM stands for cold dark matter. So here we have a very famous uh, cosmic pie chart. Basically, 25% of our universe is occupied by dark matter, and 70% is occupied by dark energy. We don't know well what they are, but we are pretty sure they exist. Especially dark energy is very mysterious. It could be just a constant in Einstein equation, cosmological constant, but, but it can be a dynamical degree of freedom, maybe scalar field, rolling, rolling down its potential slowly. We don't know. But uh, yeah, this lambda CDM paradigm uh, is very well established and it can work very well. Of course, there are some uh, exceptions like uh, Hubble tension. I'll come back to this point later. But uh, anyway, this is very well established uh, paradigm of cosmology. However, uh, uh, three years ago, so Minami and Komatsu's paper appeared on PLL and basically they say, they found some signature uh, beyond lambda CDM, uh, cosmic violet engines, by analyzing Planck 2018 polarization data. So their finding is this. So they have found, so, so rotation angle beta is 0.35 degree plus minus 0.14 degree, which excludes the null result uh, at the 99.2 confidence level and the statistical significance is 2.4. So they Found, they claimed they found the uh, cosmic violet engines. So how to detect such a signal? So we need to combine this like uh, idea of the uh, cosmic, uh, sorry, violet bio engines uh, phenomena and this uh, polarization pattern. So it is known that the polarization pattern of this uh, uh, two-dimensional uh, sky map can be decomposed into E mode and B mode polarization pattern. So B mode pattern is party odd. E mode pattern is party even already. E mode is invariant under party transformation. You can like easily understand with this picture. So E mode looks something like this. So concentric uh, shape. So it, it doesn't change uh, under party transformation. But B mode has this kind of spiral uh, shape, spiral pattern. So under the party transformation or mirror transformation, it's a uh, flip the sign. You can see that. And uh, we know that the so, uh, 2D pattern of linear polarization can be decomposed into B model and the E model components. Okay. So what we can do that with these E model and B model patterns. So we know that both uh, all the collation of B model and all the collation of E model are party even because E model itself is invariant and also B mode flips the sign, but the BB doesn't change. So they are not the very good uh, uh, quantities. However, however, we can use close correlation between E mode and B mode. Okay, and it flips a, flip the sign under the party transformation because E mode is invariant, but B mode changes the sign. Okay, so if you believe our universe uh, respect the party symmetry, so this E B close correlation should vanish, right? 
So it's a fairly good uh, indicator of body violation in our universe. And uh, with cosmic violet lingens, this EV close collision is ex expected because it cosmic violet lingens trans uh, convert E mode into B mode, as you can see in this picture. So since cosmic violet lingens or violet lingens rotates linear polarization plane, is each of these uh, yellow lines linear polarization plane. As a result, this E mode shape is converted into B mode shape with this having this uh, beam, uh, beta angle, rotation angle. You can like uh, schematically understand that, right? And in the simplest case, this EV close correlation is given by this expression. So beta is the rotation angle. And we, we have already observed EE uh, photo, uh, photo spectrum from CMB. So we expect this EB, EB close correlation is created, produced by cosmic violet engines. So actually, uh, Minami and Komatsu use a more, bit more fancy uh, expression, developed uh, expression, but basically this is what they did. So, and they also assume isotropic violet engines, which means, so CMB photon comes to ours uh, from the older direction of the sky. And uh, in principle, each direction of the sky, so the photons coming from each direction have a different rotation angle beta, but they assume that the beta for the older directions are the same. So that's what the uh, isotropic bioluminescence means. So under these assumption, they obtain this result. So uh, polarization angle rotation beta is about 0.3 degrees. So before proceeding, uh, I should mention a couple of paper, uh, follow-up paper appeared after the uh, first paper by Minami and Komatsu. So follow-up paper one is uh, this one. So written by Planck team, people, and the Minami and Komatsu are also in the also list. So they carefully reanalyze the data, Planck data, and obtain the similar result to the first paper. Uh, beta polarization rotation angle is 0.3 degree, plus minus 0.11 degree and for uh, nearly full sky data. However, they uh, concluded that uh, we choose not to assign cosmological significance to the measured value of beta until we improve our knowledge of the foreground polarization. So I'm not gonna go into the detail of this kind of discussion, but they are very carefully, so they care a lot about the possibility of the kind of contamination of the galactic foreground polarization emission into the calibration. So it's, important point. And in the follow, the second follow-up paper, anyway, the, these people, Kumatsu and uh, Johannes Esclit, uh, co combine the data, uh, WMAP data. WMAP is a previous, uh, like a satellite observing CMB photons uh, with the Planck data, and they obtain the better uh, statistical significance. So their result is beta equals to 0.3, 0.34, so it's basically the same as before, uh, but uh, there are such kind of significance is improved to be a, a 3.6 sigma. So now it's beyond three sigma significance. And this about that the possibility of galactic foreground emission contamination. So like some, there is active uh, discussion. For example, this paper appeared uh, last uh, October. So they discuss robustness of the cosmic bioluminescence measurement against the galactic foreground emission and the instrument with systematics. So they, these people working on uh, robustness of the, this observation, but I should say it's not yet the British, like we are not 100% sure what we found is actual uh, cosmic bioluminescence. So some signal which has a cosmological origin. But anyway, at least we can say that. So we found something new maybe either of the cosmic violet lingens or a new galactic signal. And in this talk, so of course I'm a cosmosist. So let me assume, so the first option, first possibility. So we actually observe cosmic violet lingens. At least this kind of observational discussion uh, gave us good motivation. So to theoretically think what can, what could cause this kind of cosmic violet lingens signal, okay? Okay, so axon-like particle. Dark energy. So axon-like particle model in a nutshell. So in the one slide, let me first uh, explain the idea. So let's consider axon-like particle or any like shoot scale field coupled to photon. 
And uh, it, I will show that if this field slowly lows lo down potential, for example, from this this side to the from here to here, so there is this non-zero uh, displacement or excursion delta pi. In this case, if of course there we need uh, some interaction with the photon and uh, this uh, scale field, but if we assume some kind of particular interaction, we can calculate that. So the rotation angle of polarization plane is given by some coupling constant times this uh, excursion of the field. So it's very simple uh, expression. And how this how this field violates the polarity symmetry is pretty easy. So the sign of this uh, displacement uh, corresponding to the cl clockwise rotation or counterclockwise rotation. In other words, it's determined by initial condition. So if, if this field starts from here, it slowly lowers down its potential from here to here, there. In this case, delta pi is negative. If the initial condition is left-hand side, this uh, field slowly lowers down its potential from left to right. So in this case, delta pi excursion or displacement is positive. So see that as negative in this case. So in this way, so it's sort of a, a spontaneous symmetry violation, uh, spontaneous, yeah, spontaneous sym symmetric uh, breaking. Okay, this is the idea of the uh, axon-like particle explanation of cosmic bioluminescence. Okay, but uh, let me give you a brief uh, uh, introduction of axon or axon-like particle. So axon was originally proposed to resolve the uh, strong CP problem of the standard model of particle physics. So in the standard model of particle physics, we expect this kind of uh, term in Lagrangian density, but we didn't find it. And the experiment put a very strong constraint on this. So it's a puzzle. We expect uh, some kind of uh, term, but uh, we don't find it. So, so people needed uh, re uh, reason or explanation. And then, so in uh, 1977, so Pecha and Queen proposed the model. So your global your symmetry is uh, spontaneously broken, and uh, their uh, pseudonym Goldstone uh, boson is uh, called the QCD action. And the QCD action can resolve this problem, strong CP problem. Okay, this is the origin, origin of the axiom. But, but later, so the string theorists uh, found uh, something similar to axiom. Uh, in, and, uh, and the string theory predicts many ultrawide axioms, or sometimes it's called the string axioms. It is because the mass of the axon-like particle in string theory is given given by not only just uh, dimension of the parameter, uh, mu and f are some meaningful parameter with the dimension, but it's exponentially suppressed by uh, instant action. So this exponential suppression can be very, very huge. So as a result, this mass can be very, very, very small. So it's quite natural to have extremely light uh, field in the context of string theory or string axioms. So nowadays, so axon-like particle, or sometimes it's called just axion. So axon-like particle is known as a very good candidate for dark matter if its mass is bigger than 10 to the minus 22 electron volt. And it can be also good candidate for dark energy if its mass is smaller than a uh, pleasant half a parameter, 10 to the minus 33 electron volt. Okay, and the uh, axon or axon like particle is very hot topic now in cosmology. And so, what, what characterizes axon like particle? As I said earlier, so axon like particle can be very, very, very light, can be much, much lighter than one electron volt. And second, so axon-like particle, since it's true scale field, it breaks polarity symmetry. So if the physics, so if this axon-like particle is involved, so physics differentiate left-hand mode and right-hand mode. That's okay. And also axon-like particle may be coupled to photon. So it's uh, naturally theoretically expected for axon-like particle has a coupling to photon. So it can give some effect on the photon. And the dark coupling, so axon photon coupling is given by this. This is called the Chan Simon coupling between photon and axon. So G is coupling constant uh, with the inverse uh, mass dimension. And the phi is axon like particle, scale, uh, should the scale field. And F is uh, a field of strength of the uh, U1 gauge field, or just photon. And F, 
F tilde is, is zero. So having this interaction, we can easily lie down equation motion for photon and axion. So without this uh, interaction term, so photon equation motion will be just wave equation. So A is vector, uh, vector potential. And the action uh, equation motion will be just the klein golden equation because action has mass. But having this term, so new terms appeared on the right hand side. Okay. And we, we want to consider uh, more about the photon uh, behavior because we want to consider uh, cosmic bioreferences. Okay, let's take a closer look at the equation motion for photon. And uh, let's, cons uh, let's assume that this phi dot is almost constant. Assuming phi, phi is slowly lows down, lows down its potential. It's so slow, so phi dot can be assumed, yeah, approximated by just constant. So it, so this assumption makes uh, equation motion as a, just a linear. So we can lie down, easily lie down dispersion relation uh, for photon or vector potential, especially uh, by using left hand light circular polarization mode. So it, uh, dispersion relation is given by this, okay? So L and R uh, represent left-handed photon and the right-handed photon. And so left-handed photon and right-handed photon have of course same, so uh, same dispersion, dispersion relation without this coupling, but with this coupling, so it's proportional to G, so dispersion relation for left and right circular polarization model photon are different. Okay, it's very interesting. In other words, speed of light changes depending on the polarization. So phase speed of light are different depending on polarization. That's a, a prediction of uh, axon-like particle and chang simon coupling. So what's the consequence of such a uh, dispersion relation? Consequence is rotation of linear polarization, polarization plane or bioreflingence. So it can be easily understood. So let's consider a linear polarization photon uh, which uh, propagate along the z-axis. So since a photon is just a, a transverse wave, wave, I don't need to lie to z-component, it's always zero. So linear polarization and the linear polarization like this can be always decomposed into circular polarization as we learn in the undergrad uh, electromagnetism course. So, okay, let's decompose this x uh, linear polarization into circular polarizations and consider uh, evolution of this photon. So when photon propagates uh, in a vacuum, but they're filled up with axon-like particle, so there are dispersion relation for left and right polarization are different. In this case, so, uh, the phase of photon can be calculated like this. So of course, left and right polarization has a common part, just K. Okay, it's a normal case. But also there is a different part. Let's call it delta omega. And uh, delta, as we saw in the previous slide, so delta, this is delta omega part with a flipped sign, okay? So this is a manifestation of party violation due to axiom. So, okay, here we have a plus sign and a minus sign. And uh, since delta omega can be time dependent, so here I, I add the time integral, but it's not very important. So anyway, so, and at the end, end of the day, we can combine two components and go back to the linear like a linear polarization basis. And the result is this. We have familiar cosine sign appears. So it's, it means nothing but the rotation of the polarization plane. Original, or, original polarization plane is just x, x axis, but now it's rotated by this angle. So time, uh, time integral of the delta omega part. So difference in the dispersion relation. And, but we saw that so this delta omega is given by phi dot, right? So time integral of phi dot is uh, just a phi minus phi. So that, like boundary terms, only boundary term or boundary condition contribute to this rotation angle, rotation angle of the linear polarization plane. So this is very simple expression, right? And G is coupling constant as we saw before and minus one over two is also uh, there. So here's some animation of the polarization plane evolution. So it, without axiom coupling, so just uh, the photon, linearly polarized the photon, 
just oscillate on the same uh, polarization plane. However, if you uh, put the coupling to the axion, and then so as axion slowly loads down its potential, so like polarization plane on photon gradually rotates. And as a result, we have non-zero phi. And then in observation, it's called beta. Okay. So to wrap up, so we have the Lagrangian. So our theory is this: we have axon-like particle, so true scalar field, and normal electromagnetism, so just photon. And we add, we consider coupling between this axon-like particle and photon. Okay. And then, so as we just saw, so polarization rotation happen, and this its angle is given by belly this simple expression, just coupling const, basically coupling constant times uh, excursion or displacement of the axon-like particle field. Okay, so that's a theoretical uh, discussion, but uh, to, uh, uh, to consider a quantitative uh, result, so we need to solve the uh, evolution of phi to obtain this excursion or uh, displacement of phi, and it depends on the mass of the axon-like particle. Okay. So let's calculate uh, evolution of the axon-like particle in uh, in the universe, in the expanding universe. So for simplicity, let's ignore. So it's let's let's use uh, cosmological perturbation. Let's uh, de decompose this uh, axon-like particle into the only time-dependent homogeneous part and the inhomogeneous part. So inhomogeneous part depends on the position in the universe, but let's ignore such a small fluctuation. Yeah. So for simplicity in this uh, discussion. And again, for simplicity, let's assume uh, just the quadratic potential. It's very easy. So if you're interested in cosine type potential, we also perform such analysis in our paper. So please refer that. But uh, in this talk, let's consider very simple quadratic potential or just mass term for the axiom. So then, so equation motion for uh, homogeneous background axiom like particle is this. So this H is a uh, hyperparameter, depending on time. And this M is uh, so mass of the axiom or coefficient of the potential. So we can easily solve that numerically because we know so this hyperparameter evolution uh, according to lambda CDM paradigm. And uh, once we obtain the time evolution of this phi, so just plugging uh, the result into like a previous equation for beta, and we know, kind of know beta, from observation, so that the beta is about 0.3 de 35 degree. So by calculating that, by using calculation result, we can obtain G coupling constant. So we can determine axon photon coupling G for given M. Okay, this is the main result. Okay. So again, we use uh, mod uh, just a quadratic potential model for axon-like particle. So x-axis is a, such a mass of the axon-like particle, and y-axis is a coupling constant g. And uh, this shader region has been already excluded by some other experiment. Okay. And these two, we have two lines in which we can successfully explain observed uh, cosmic violet fringes due to axon-like uh, particle. But why we have different lines? Because we have one more parameter in the model which is initial amplitude of the axion, axion-like particle. So we parameterize that by using pleasant energy fluxion, omega phi. So omega phi means how much energy fluxion uh, axion occupies in the pleasant universe. So if we set uh, omega phi equal to 10 to the minus six, that means so axion is very minor component in our universe, only occupy like a very 10 to the minus four percent. So, but still we can explain so cosmic violet fringes if we are on the on, on this line, purple line, okay? So what is green line? So in green lines, we took a maximum uh, value for omega phi at the present time. So in this region, in this region, so in this parameter region, this axon-like particle corresponds to dark energy itself because omega phi is about 0.7 here. So the mass of the axon is smaller than half a parameter present time, 10 to minus 33. So m over h naught is shown here. Okay, so here is one. So in this region, the axiom can be uh, dark energy. So omega omega phi is about 0.7 at 
or 70% of the universe is occupied by this axiom. So in the light on this region, so uh, this axiom is too heavy to be dark energy, but too light to be 100% of dark matter. So it's, uh, how to say, minor, just a minor component of dark matter. So about 1% of dark matter. Anyway, but if you're on this line, green line, you can explain, uh, observe the cosmic violet fringes. Okay. Anyway, so probably the point is, you, if you're on the, this line, this uh, field, axon-like particle, explain both of dark energy and the cosmic violet fringes. So it's very interesting case. Okay. So I still have about 10 minutes. So let me quickly go through all the dark energy discussion. So I said a lambda CDM paradigm is uh, very well worked, works, but we have some exception. So one is hypotension, and all the dark energy is a scheme to alleviate it. So what is hypotension? It's a bit old uh, figure, but the uh, hypotension is a disc discrepancy between local measurement of the hypopolymer, so hypopolymer at the present time, and the CMB and large scale structure early. Uh, observation or early universe measurement of the Hubble parameter. And uh, for example, here, so you can easily see the discrepancy of their result. So basically, two different types of measurement was, were done to obtain the same quantity, and there are this, uh, they got the different result. So it, it says 4.4 sigma, but the lesson tree, like, uh, it's now like a more than five sigma. Some people say six sigma. So it's a serious problem. Uh, in the cosmology. And to alleviate or to resolve or alleviate this tension, so how, uh, early dark energy model was considered. So early dark energy uh, is a new degree of freedom in the cosmology. So it's in this, uh, I think it's, this figure is nice. So x axis is uh, evolution of scale factor. So here is a pleasant point and uh, Along here as a uh, uh, recombination and 10 minus 4, like a less shift. You can see as a less shift. And uh, I think this is dark uh, dark energy. Uh, blue is dark energy. Uh, green is radi radiation and uh, orange is dark uh, matter. So Y axis is energy fraction of the universe. So these three components are usually considered. But uh, on top of that, we can add uh, so called dark uh, early dark energy, so new degree of freedom, which behaves like this. So it affects the uh, cosmic expansion only around the recombination or last scattering. Last scattering means uh, like uh, the emission time of the CMB photons. So by adding this uh, new degree of freedom, so you can, yeah, you can change the result of our universe. Uh, uh, measurement of the Hubble parameter like this, and uh, the, it alleviates the tension with a, like a late time universe uh, measurement. But to achieve this uh, behavior, we need a bit uh, unusual potential of the scalar field, something like this, so one minus cosine to the power, and this power should be bigger than two, or bigger or equal to two, or just uh, five to the four, or five to the six, well, five to the two, like a quadratic potential doesn't doesn't work. Yeah, because we we want this early dark energy uh, decay as first as radiation or even faster than that. Okay. That's the early dark energy. And uh, some people analyze the uh, data and they already obtain some like uh, uh, wanted behavior. Uh, uh, desired, desired behavior for early dark energy. For example, when dark energy becomes significant and they start decaying, is that parameter is called AC, like a scale factor at that time. And FEDE is the energy fraction at that time, the time of AC. Okay, it's written here. So AC is a scale factor to start oscillation is uh, early dark energy. And uh, they obtain uh, this kind of counter plot for uh, FEDE and the AC, right? So here we want to consider what if this field, early dark energy field, scale field, has the chance time coupling to photon, and if it's possible for this early dark energy field to explain 
cosmic violet lenses. To check that, so we can translate this obtained uh, contour plot into uh, field initial value, uh, initial field value, and the mass of the ED uh, field, and the further like a translate. So having the initial field value and mass, having this uh, data like observation uh, cosmic violet lenses rotation angle, and by using this uh, equation, we can com uh, translate phi initial phi into g. So we obtain we can obtain this kind of uh, contour plot for g and n. Basically, we uh, translate this contour plot to explain EDE or uh, alleviate Hubble tension with this uh, into this. So in this basically in this region, if the early dark energy field is in this region in, with this mass and the coupling constant to photon, it ex it can explain of cosmic bubble fringes, and it can elevate uh, Hubble tension. So it's an interesting region. And this is a result for uh, cosine minus one minus cosine squared uh, model. We can perform the same thing for a different type of mo model, the different potential shape. So it's a uh, five to the four potential case, or five to the that's one minus cosine to the three, uh, cubic case. We can perform uh, this one and this one. And we found that interestingly, so typically this the result is, so please look at the y-axis. So, so it's a bit hard to see that. But the typically, so the required coupling constant is inverse of the Planck scale. Maybe it's living here. Yes. So maybe it's a, uh, it has some implication for high energy physics. But it, at least here I want to say, okay, Hubble tension problem is known, and there is already like uh, some models to alleviate this tension is proposed. So we consider whether th such a model can simultaneously explain cosmic bilingualities, and we found it's, yeah, it's it's possible if the like uh, that scale field satisfies this uh, parameter region. And uh, how to uh, verify this possibility? So there is a future prospect. So we haven't, so in this talk, I assume the field of a cosmic uh, axon-like particle or this uh, EDE field is just a homogeneous part, but uh, it must have some fluctuation, some inhomogeneous component. In that case, we have uh, anisotropic bilifringes. That means, so depending on the direction of the sky we observe, uh, CMB photon, the bilateral angles angles are different. So they rotate their uh, linear position angle by the different angle, depending on the direction it co comes. Okay, such a like anisotropy of bilateral is expected if we take into account fluctuation of the uh, field, scalar field. Okay, and uh, we expect that uh, like a future observation will reach this kind of sensitivity. So hopefully we can test uh, this ED scenario as well. Okay, and uh, so coming back to original cosmic value functions, so it's almost the end of the, my presentation, but I should mention other proposals. So here in this talk, I just consider one, well, the simplest model of axon-like particle is, has just uh, like a quadratic potential and slowly lows down its potential. That's it, very simple. And in our paper, we also analyze the cosine time potential, but it's uh, basically the same. But there, there are some other proposals, like uh, axon domain world, dark coupled to dark matter, electric axion strings. But I see the, for example, interesting one is axion domain walls. So uh, proposed by these people. So if, so, so today I explain that cosmic value fringes is caused by time evolution of the uh, field phi. But it can be special. It doesn't have to be time evolution of phi. So what we really need is delta phi. So the difference in the field of value of the axon-like particle uh, between the, our observation point and the emission point of CMB. So if the universe is uh, separated into small pieces uh, by domain walls, and each of the pieces has a different value of the axon-like particle, 
or like actually like particle field. So it also causes the delta phi. And uh, th these people show that uh, that scenario can work and successfully explain the observational uh, cosmic violet flanges. Yeah, so this is another interesting idea. Maybe you can come up with another yeah, interesting idea. So if you have uh, any idea, please uh, come to me and let's discuss. Okay, let's summarize my talk. So CMB uh, found uh, cosmic violet flanges. So beta is about 0.35 or 34 degrees. Uh, plus minus 0.1 degrees uncertainty. So it's interesting. So it's indicate because it indicates party violation in our universe on the largest scale ever observed. And actually, like particle are well motivated dark matter and dark energy candidate. It's coupled to photon uh, through Chan Simon uh, coupling uh, interaction term. And then so it naturally causes uh, bodily flanges of the photon. So simple model is slowly lowering down axions like particle, slowly lowering down its potential, can explain both dark energy and cosmic value simultaneously. This is interesting. And also I believe we discussed early dark energy model, uh, which alleviates Hubble tension, can also explain cosmic value If it has a chance of coupling to photon and the coupling constant is about uh, Planck, Planck scale inverse. So to, uh, as a future, Observational uh, prospect. I mentioned the anisotropic bioluminescence, so it can be used uh, to test, uh, yeah, th these scenarios and by future CMB observation. Okay, thank you very much. That's it.